This is the second and final part of our build for a community member of ours on the Patreon Discord, ZDG. ZDG does 3D modeling, placement, things like that with a software called Daz 3D. Works with a couple of other tools as well. All he ever does is post on Patreon Discord complaining about how his system is taking days to render a scene and about CPU thread limitations and about CUDA limitations. So we've worked with the community on the GN Discord to put together a system for ZDG and fix his problems. Before that, this is brought to you by the EVGA 240 CLC, which is a $120 MSRP closed loop liquid cooler. The EVGA 240 CLC has an RGB illuminated pump plate, uses a thermal probe within the lower pump chamber for liquid temperature monitoring, and allows customization through software. Learn more at the link in the description below. This is the result of the build, which was in part one. We've got uh, a Ryzen 7 1700 system. The CPU was purchased by the community. I got a board from Gigabyte. It's a Gaming 5 X370 board. I actually encountered some trouble we'll talk about in a moment. Uh, the community bought a GTX 1070 used, and that's a Gaming X card. They got some RAM. I picked up the case, the power supply. We got some other components in here as well. So this is going to be the benchmark results of the build as a whole, how it came together and how it works. So the problems we encountered, basically, uh, I, I put it together on camera, as you all saw, and then I gave it to Patrick to do benchmarks. We did gaming benchmarks, power consumption, things like that, as normally. Unfortunately, his entire first day was a wash. So he spent the whole day at running all the benchmarks on it, and then we realized that there were problems with stability and with memory frequency, and that the frequency wouldn't hold with the XMP enabled, so it would be stuck to whatever stock was, 2133 or something. And also, we started getting spurious crashes at one point, which was really frustrating because, of course, uh, we're thinking, well, maybe it's just our image is no good. Nope, what actually happened was, after troubleshooting every single thing in the system, memory, all this stuff, fortunately, we have a whole shelf full of components, troubleshot all of it, and it came down to not the motherboard, but the motherboard socket, the CPU socket. So I've never had this problem before. Basically, uh, the board that was sent out was just, I guess, a one-off defect or maybe a used review sample or something like that. Write it off as a, a normal non-issue because we have three of these boards and all of them have been fine. But this one that we got and used in this build, first time it was ever used, socket of the CPU and the latch for the AM4 latch, uh, those of you who have used it will know that it, it kind of has like a, a point where you can feel more pressure applied and it locks into place. Well, this one didn't really do that. And I kind of noticed it during the build process, but I didn't really think much of it. I just kind of thought, oh, well, that was an easier one than normally. But uh, what actually happened was that socket is on the board loose. So it's loose enough that the pads weren't making full contact to the pins on the CPU because there was a, a little bit of sort of Z space between them. So without full contact, uh, depending on how tight the CPU cooler was, basically that dictated the stability of the system. So the, st the stability and the performance of the system was not based on component specs. It was based on how tight were the screws holding down the CPU for the CPU cooler. So um, yeah, that was a problem. We had to unbuild it all, replace the board. It's good now. I put one of our review boards in there. Technically Patrick did, but we put a review board in there and that one's definitely good to go. So solve the problem. Gigabyte's gonna take the other one back and replace it. No big deal, but definitely a, a weird first time issue uh, for the, the socket retention. And retested everything twice due to the memory instability issues. So that's two full days of tests. Uh, it's good to go now. So let's go through some of the Blender results first because ZDG does basically all rendering. That's gonna be the most interesting to him. And then uh, these will be derived from our recent 1700 benchmarks. Then we'll have game benchmarks and power benchmarks specific to this system. So for Blender, we've previously run several Blender rendering workloads on the R7 1700 CPU as shown in some of these charts from our i5-8400 CPU review. We have charts for the monkey heads render, the splash image, and then the GN logo image. All of these were either made in-house or modified in-house and represent a pretty realistic use case for someone like ZDG who does this kind of thing all the time. The R7-1700 is the best in terms of performance per dollar and overclocking pushes that further. 
We've actually pre-overclocked ZDG's system to a stable 3.9 gigahertz, though you could do 4.0 with some extra voltage, but we'll leave that up to him to decide if he wants to do that for 24 seven use. He's fully capable of that anyway. For renders, it doesn't get much better in terms of efficacy at the dollar. The GTX 1070 will enable CUDA acceleration for his more specialized applications, which we didn't test, but it's there if it's ever needed. For 1080p gaming, we found ZDG's build ran Total War Warhammer at around 115 FPS average, with the lows at 70 and 60 FPS, 0.1%. The build did okay with Project Cars, measuring an 80 FPS average with lows around the 60s, and Watch Dogs 2 also did just fine, marking a 92 FPS average frame rate with lows at 58 and 74. It's not the best frame rate you could get, but for someone who's primarily going to use the machine for CPU-bound render tasks and some CUDA workloads, it's doing just fine for the occasional game. 1440p reduces FPS a bit as we become clearly more bound by the GTX 1070 than by the 1700 CPU. Frame rate falls from 115 to 96 FPS average in Total War, still perfectly acceptable with lows around where they were previously. Project Cars also drops to 70 FPS, so it's falling 10 and Watch Dogs 2 drops hard from 92 to 66 FPS average, but still remains perfectly playable. As for power consumption, we're looking at total system power consumption at the wall rather than EPS 12 volt consumption, because this is a complete system build, so that's what matters. The stock non-overclock configuration draws 68 watts idle, with the high performance Windows profile enabled, and we are at 145 watts in Cinebench multi-threaded workloads, 90 watts single-threaded, and 144 in Blender, which is the most important metric to know. We also have 261 watt draw in a gaming scenario with Total War Warhammer. Overclocking obviously increases those numbers with Blender now drawing 190 watts at the wall, Total War drawing 270 and Cinebench up to 198. So that's the build. This is, uh, it's a pretty good system actually. Like I said in the beginning, I asked for this case from Silverstone because I like this case and I know for someone like ZDG he's gonna like it because he's got two needs which are uh, ventilation, ZDG's big on functionality, not necessarily form, and then also dust filtration, just because honestly, I've seen some of his pictures he's uploaded to Discord of older systems, and I think it'll help out to have. So this case is good for that. It's the same one we use in our render machine, just black instead of white. Uh, Cooling is no problem at all. And then uh, for the CPU cooler we have it on the top, it's a 240 EVGA cooler, and it's pushing air up and out, which seems to be working pretty well and then the, uh, the 1070 is not too affected by the power supply shroud in the bottom just because the case is taller. So it provides a good maybe four to five inches of space between the card and the shroud, which is enough for it to breathe. So everything came together well, performance is good, uh, clearly a good rendering machine, good animation type of machine on a budget because with a GTX 1070 in there, you're gonna do fine in most CUDA accelerated tasks that are not like pro, daily driver, professional user type of rendering, and then the CPU can handle all of his CPU tasks. So that's it for this one. If you want to join the Patreon Discord where all of this was planned in secret from ZDG, you can go to patreon.com slash gamersnexus, or you can just subscribe for more as always, and go to store.gamersnexus.net for shirts and things like this. I'll see you all next time.